And now, I have the honor to welcome on stage Manin Varand uh, Selvaraj, who is a uh, staff engineer at Slack, with experience building large-scale cloud systems, uh, lots of different technologies. I would say he's definitely overqualified for a talk at PyCon CZ. <laughs> But he'll say that in his own words. Welcome, Anivaran. Thank you, Peter. OK. <laughs> so what do Albert Einstein, who's a great scientist, Sheryl Sandberg, who was the chief operating officer of Meta, and Tom Hanks, who is a great Hollywood actor, and Agatha Christie, who is an author, great author, Emma Watson, who is a great actress, and me, possibly have in common. Are we all related? Do we have the same looks? Definitely no. And do we like the same flavor of ice cream? I don't know. We all have suffered a condition called imposter syndrome. And we are not alone. So I'm here to talk to you about imposter syndrome today. So why should we talk about imposter syndrome? About, uh, according to a 2020 study, about 82% of people have suffered imposter syndrome at least once in their lifetime. And how about the rest of the 18%? Probably they never suffered imposter syndrome or they are real imposters. I don't know. So, yeah, my name is Manivanan Selvaraj. I work as a staff engineer at Slack Technologies. Probably uh, many of you would have used Slack. It's a collaboration tool. And I am part of developer experience team at Slack. We build end-to-end -end developer experience for all the developers at Slack. And uh, I have about 30 minutes, I think. I'll try to wrap up my presentation within 25 minutes so that we can have five minutes at the end for questions if you have any. Um, so um, I have suffered imposter syndrome since the beginning of my career until today. And have I overcome imposter syndrome? I, uh, no. But I have managed uh, I mean, I have learned to manage it. I can tell you an example. When I got to know that my abstract for my talk in PyCon got selected, the first thing came to my mind was, I did a mistake, panel did a mistake, and what do I possibly have to share with all the brilliant people around here? Definitely, I shouldn't go for it. I should skip it. But still, I'm here, standing in front of you, uh, talking to you all, pretending to know that what I'm talking about. So why, what if we don't address imposter syndrome? You might be missing out a very good opportunity coming your way because of fear of failure and you might be overworking yourself to prove that you are not a fraud, and that will cause you stress and anxiety, and also cause you burnout. I have used the term imposter syndrome so many times, but I didn't tell you what it is, right? How many of you know what imposter syndrome is? That's a lot, okay. So, yeah. So. Tell you in simple words, not I mean technical or medical terms. Imposter syndrome is like feeling like a fraud. Um, you feel like everyone around you knows what they are doing, but you feel like you don't belong there. You are not competent enough. And good thing is, it is very common among high performers, high performers like you. And you'll have a feeling that I just got lucky. And whenever someone uh, shares your feedback, you think people have found out that you are a fraud, which is not true, of course. So, so what are the effects of imposter syndrome? So 
One is perfection, uh, I mean perfectionism. Perfection is a good thing, but when you think you are a fraud, you will tend to overwork and make it too perfect that people don't find out that you are a fraud. And second one is comparison. You constantly compare with people around you and think that you are not good enough and people are way ahead of me, I'm not good enough, and you try to keep up with them. And third one is fear of failure. So you won't um, risk of failure. You tend to overwork and like make sure you don't fail or don't take any risks at all to make sure you don't fail so that people don't fi find out that you are an imposter. And fourth one is denial of competence and praise. So when somebody says you are a, doing a good job, you just say, no, I just got lucky. Um, I think I don't deserve this. So before we get into strategies, right, uh, let me share you a story. Um, so back in 2017, uh, I was in a production incident. Of course, I caused the incident. And we were debugging uh, this incident in a war room. I don't want to get into technicals, uh, just like we were like five or six people sitting in a war room and finding out what the issue is. While troubleshooting, I just accidentally wiped out the entire Mongo database, which had all the data. Just rm rf slash star. And that's it. There is no data. And I felt like, how could you do this? You are a tech lead. Can you even do this? Do you even belong here? What are people going to think about? All these thing, thoughts are going on in my mind. And then, like, we were working in the incident, and luckily there was an hour old backup which we set up, and we were able to recover from the backup, and things were up and running. So even after going home that day, I kept asking myself, how could you do this? I mean, this is so wrong. I mean, any junior developer is OK, but you are tech lead. You did this. And then um, next day, I came to office. And then my manager, manager called me for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. OK, I thought, for the screw up I did yesterday, I'm going to get fired. This is the end. And what if I get fired? Will I be able to get a job? And I was working in United States. I was originally from India. So if I lose my job there, I probably have around 60 days to find a job. Otherwise, I have to move back to India. So all these thoughts running in my head. And then my manager told me, uh, congratulations, Mani. You are promoted to staff software engineer. <laughs> what? <laughs> this man is out of mind. <laughs> really? <laughs> and then. I didn't tell anything to my manager. I ran to my mentor and told my mentor, I don't understand what is happening. Uh, I just got promoted to staff software engineer. I don't even know I, if I deserve this with all the screw up that I did. Then he explained me the whole thing. Money, definitely you are not promoted for the screw up that you did, but you totally forgot that you led this project and then you um, taught other people how to do things, and you, in fact, you set up the backup because of which we were able to recover, and you presented in conferences. I think you forgot all those in the incident that it happened. I think you have imposter syndrome. You should read about it. If you don't like me, I, I mean, this was my response. If you don't like me, just tell me. Don't tell some fancy you know, psychological terms. Um, that is when I heard what imposter syndrome is, and I started learning about it. and listen to audibles um, and things, and I understood what imposter syndrome is and learned how to manage it, I think. OK, so that I told you what imposter syndrome is. Um, so I just have some simple strategies which I read and learned. Um, these are not like very complex, and uh, I am not a psychologist or expert. It is just. I am one like you. I have been in software engineering. I went through imposter syndrome. And these things helped me, which I am going to share with you. So number one is be vulnerable. Number two is find a mentor and find a mentee. Number three is don't be a tour guide. Be a co-explorer. And number four is document your wins. So we'll get into each one. 
So be vulnerable. What is being vulnerable? So in all our life, we have been asked to show our strength, be tough, um, show you are successful, tell people you are successful. But being vulnerable is opposite of that. You tell people what your struggles are, what your failure stories are, where you, I mean, where you have failed and where, I mean, you be open to your, for feedback and most leaders, best leaders aren't afraid to be vulnerable. And of course, we don't have to be tough all the time, right? Most trusted relationships are built with vulnerability, not by being, being tough. Um, yeah, here also I'll share you a story. Not so long ago, um, so I was invited to a leadership offsite. This was at my company. And so this was a meeting with leaders high up in the leadership chain, like vice presidents, directors, a lot of people. And we were asked to do an exercise called journey line exercise. Um, so what it is, so some, they explained me, like everyone in the room has to go one by one, and they have to share their life journeys, ups and downs, um, where you had like life moments, very happy and sad, things like that. And hearing this itself made me nervous. Uh, what am I going to share here? And what are these people going to think about me? And then I just want to get it over with. I went first, let me get it over with. And I started sharing my life journey, like how I started uh, my, like uh, how, how I started from India, uh, how I, bo I was born and brought up in a lower middle class family, how I went to college, um, and then like uh, um, at the age of dropout, and then I had some few subjects which I had to go back to college and complete it. And then my promotion I had, some health issues I had, and the panic attack I went through, which I mistook for a heart attack and had to be taken to emergency room. Yeah, those are the things I shared. And immediately after uh, sharing this, I felt like I overshared these things. Then something surprising happened. Leaders in that room, one by one, they went through their life stories. They were sh sharing their personal failures, personal issues, family issues, and some people even uh, shared the legal troubles they had. And that moment was very eye-opening for me. Until then, I never felt a connection with these people. Although I worked with them, I didn't have, like, I didn't feel a connection with them. In the just that one hour of meeting, I felt an instant connection with everyone. These people are like me. They have struggles. They are also going through or went through what I went through. Um, and that connection really helped me. After the meeting, I started feeling more confident. And my imposter really was really coming down. I really, uh, yeah, that is the story. And I have linked the journey line exercise in this slide. I'll share my slides after the presentation. If you are interested, you can go through that exercise with your team. I'm sure it will help like, build a connection and trust with everyone that you work with. Yeah, that is being vulnerable. And number two is find a mentor and a mentee. And any journey that you take in life, right? Um, like, let us speak specific to software engineering. Like, um, say you want to pursue a career in engineering, you want to go up in technical career path or management career path, product management, or whatever it is, you are not the first one. There are hundreds of people, millions of people out there who have taken a similar path already. And if you find one and reach out to them, I'm sure most of the people will be happy to mentor. And uh, yeah, so they, uh, 
Yeah, so I shared the mentor example already. The person who I ran out to whenever, whenever I am down or whenever I doubt, I go to him for validity. And he, he is a, not a fraud hotline for me. And mentor is something you understand. Mentoring someone, why is it important? So here also a short story. So I was once asked, like this was a decade ago, I was asked to mentor um, a new joinee in our team. Host. So he studied uh, in an institution called Indian Institute of Technology. That is one the top premium school in India. Um, like, I didn't come from such a prestigious school. I wasn't a bright student either. So the thought of mentoring him, uh, like, what, what do I have to offer for this IIT biscuit? That's the thought that came to my mind. And when I started mentoring, more than I helped him, I was helping myself. The thought that I was able to share some knowledge that can help IIT pass out, uh, grow up in their career, really helped me get out of my imposter syndrome. So that is what uh, find a mentor and a find a mentee is. And number three is don't be a tour guide, be a co-explorer. So this is just an analogy. And when I started uh, as a tech lead, I thought a tech lead uh, is a person who needs to have all the answers. A tech lead is a person who has to assign work, and tech lead is the person who, has, who is the most knowledgeable in the room. But those, are well, those were all wrong answers. This is just like being a tour guide, right? Like You know a place, you take people there, and sh you show them around, and you ha give them a good time. So most software uh, projects are new, right? I mean, every, the last project you, you did is not the same as the next project you are going to do. There is always uh, something new. That's why you need to be a co-explorer, especially when you are a lead. It's um, always good to say, I don't know, when you don't know things, you don't have to put up an act. People respect you even more if you say, I don't know. And when there is a person who is more knowledgeable than you, that is good for you. As a team lead, you can ask him for help and find out solutions with them instead of finding it yourself. And a good co-explorer co team lead will be never afraid to ask for help. And number four is, document your wins. So this is having a personal success journal and writing what you think success for you is. I mean, when you feel successful, you just write it down. It, could, it doesn't have to be huge all the time. It can be as small as a bug that you solved, a pull request that you delivered, an open source contribution that you made. It, it just reflects on your journey. So whenever you feel down, or you feel like an imposter, you can go back to this journal and look at your successes and think, hey, I am not an imposter, I am a rock star. You can have that feeling anytime you want. Um, yeah, those are the four things I had. To summarize, we discussed about what, Im what is imposter syndrome, effects of imposter syndrome, and uh, the four strategies to overcome imposter syndrome. Um, yeah. That is pretty much I had. Thank you so much for listening to me. Um, and thank you.